In this video today, I will be sharing with you how you can back up and restore your SQL Server database directly to Amazon S3 Bucket. Now, it's very important to know that this is only supported for SQL Server versions 2020, and higher. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you how to create a S3 Bucket if you're not familiar, how to create a policy and a user and granting the relevant permissions to perform that backup. So with that said, let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to do here, guys, is that we're going to be creating a Amazon S3 bucket. So I'm going to say create bucket. Specify a name for your bucket. Your name has to be unique. So the name of my bucket is SQL Backups 2024. Scroll down because I'm accessing this bucket over the internet. I have to uncheck this option, right? Now I need to acknowledge that. Scroll down and select create bucket. So my bucket has been created. So within your bucket, you need to create a folder to store your backups. So I'm going to create a folder to do that. SQL backups. Scroll down, select create folder. Now we need a very important piece of information, right? You need to select the backups folder and select copy URL. So you need to store this somewhere. I'm going to store it in management studio. So this is what it looks like. Now we need to create a policy. And then after we create a policy, we create a user and assign the user that policy. So from the search, search for IAM. So here I'm going to select policies, create new policy. From the drop down, the service that you want to select is S3. Now there are three things that we want to do. We want to be able to write to the bucket, read from the bucket and possibly list anything that is in the bucket. So from the actions, expand list and we're going to look for list bucket under the read permissions we're going to select get object and under the right permission we're going to look for put object so put object is right here so let's select that scroll down so for resource ARN we're going to select all then select next here you need to specify a name for your policy so it's called SQL backups Scroll down, select create policy. So we have successfully created our policy. Now we need to go to users and create a user to perform our backups. So select create user. So I'm going to call this SQL backup user. Select next. Here we're going to attach policies directly. Search for the policy that you created. Mine is SQL backups. Select next and then select create user. From the user that you created, you need two pieces of information. So select the user, select create access key, select the option that says third party service, check that you understand the above recommendation and want to proceed to create an access key and select next. So this is optional, right? So I'm going to select create access key. So what we want is the access key and the secret key. So you want to show your secret key. You want to copy this and you want to store it. And you want to ensure that you grab your access key as well. Now with the three pieces of information that we stored, we're going to use it to create a credential. So this is the syntax for creating a credential, right? So let's copy this. First, we need to change the endpoint. And please keep in mind that you need to get rid of the forward slash at the end. And instead of HTTPS, you're going to have S3. So this is what your endpoint should look like. So copy and replace it with everything that is in the bracket. Now for the access key, we're going to replace it with our access key. Ensure there is no space. And please keep in mind that there is a colon between the access key and the secret key. So now we need to grab the secret. Now we can create our credential. Let's execute. Now it's time for us to perform a backup. Now this is a syntax to perform a backup to the S3 URL. Now this is if you want your backup to have multiple files. So what we're going to do is copy this syntax and edit it. So let's paste. We only need one URL. So let's get rid of this. So we are going to place our endpoint here. Replace the endpoint. And here you're going to specify the name of your database. So I'm going to be doing the, a backup of my demo DB. So it's this little small database here. Now I need to specify my database name. Now let's execute this backup statement. 
and the backup went through successfully now let's check our s3 bucket so we'll search s3 click your backup bucket and then sql backup so here my database backup went through successfully now let's perform a restore of this database backup so i'm going to be deleting this database in order to restore your database it follows a similar syntax so let's copy and paste this let's paste this here so instead of backup we're going to be doing restore and instead of format we're going to be doing replace and we do not need the compression here so let's get rid of that and instead of to it's going to be restore from now let's execute this statement and that's it our database has been successfully restored now let's refresh databases here we can see that we are now seeing the demo db 